Okay, today I want to talk just briefly about metabolism in kind of a broad picture overview kind of way. Because metabolism and the breaking down of food is so important to human beings and biological organisms and biochemically there's so many interesting pathways that we as instructors and professors force students to memorize. And it's easy to get lost in the details of each of these processes and kind of lose, pick, lose sight of the bigger picture. And I'm a big fan of concept maps, and I like I like a good diagram. So I have um, one that I've reproduced from a textbook here that I think gives a nice overview of metabolism in general. And I just kind of want to walk through it. And again, kind of a, an introductory big picture view. And then there'll be individual videos for each of the steps kind of along the way. So when we're eating foods, these foods get physically broken down as we're eating. So it starts in our mouth as we're chewing things, we're physically breaking down by, you know, biting things into smaller bits. And then our saliva excretes various enzymes that help to break down these foods. So for carbohydrates, that enzyme is alpha amylase, for example, that breaks some of those alpha glycosidic bonds that are in larger polysaccharides. Um, starches in particular um, that helps to break them into smaller component pieces you know that's one thing that it does there's other enzymes that will break down lipids and proteins and this happens at various stages along your digestion so as your food is being moving through your gastrointestinal tract so from your mouth down to your esophagus to your stomach then these different things are getting broken down in different places and then through your small intestine and then you're kind of reabsorbing what we need so the the goal of all of this is to break things down that's catabolism so we're breaking things down into their component pieces with the ultimate goal of anabolism which is to build them back up again so if you've heard of anabolic steroids for example that's bulking up or building up of muscle tissue so um, like I said, in, I'll have different videos for each of these, but I just wanted to kind of take a step back because when students are learning things like the citric acid cycle or the urea cycle or glycolysis, then it's easy to get lost in all the different steps of things and lose sight of the big picture. So that's where we're staying here. Big picture. Okay, so food, we can kind of put it into these different categories. We get other things from food, of course, but let's just focus on these that have pretty hefty metabolic pathways. So lipids undergo fatty, added, fatty acid oxidation, and there's something called the urea cycle that um, I'll talk about in another video. So the fatty acid oxidation then allows for the production of acetyl-CoA, and then acetyl-CoA can go into the citric acid cycle. That's our first um, kind of product that becomes a reactant, and it, um, it reacts with that oxalate, oxal <laughs> and then those things react together and form citrate and then we get to move along the cycle in that way now um and you know and then it goes into uh the whole cycle and then the electron transport chain and then we ultimately end up with um atp at the end and that's kind of the end game with all this is where does our energy come from so where does the en energy come from it has to come from all the production of this atp which comes from these reduced coenzymes that kind of go through the electron transport chain so in the presence of oxygen these things then, um, you know, are popping off electrons and popping off hydrogens. That change in the concentration of things allows for the driving of that ATP kind of pump. All right. So really the, the name of the game for metabolism, for digestion, is we have to get this process started. So we have to get to acetyl-CoA or acetyl-S-CoA as it's sometimes referred to in textbooks. Okay, so that's for lipids. For foods, then, and then we get sugary foods or starchy foods or um, anything else that we're getting in our carbohydrates or our complex carbohydrates, then we undergo glycolysis. And again, I'll have a separate video on glycolysis that talks about the 10 steps where we're breaking down carbohydrates into smaller bits. And then uh, from there, glycolysis, the major product is pyruvate. So at the end of this thing, we have glucose we get to pyruvate. Now the pyruvate can form acetyl-CoA, which then again goes into the citric acid cycle. So that's kind of the nice thing about that. We end up with two pyruvates from each glucose molecule because um, it's a three carbon chain. So then we get to our acetyl-CoA and the whole cycle goes through. And then proteins, so we're talking meat, uh, beans, anything with um, in our diet that we think of as being kind of protein rich, 
that undergoes amino acid catabolism. Again, I'll focus on that in its own detail in separate videos. But that step, because of the variability of amino acids, can actually put you in a number of different places along the way. So we can kind of get prior to the acetyl-CoA formation, to the acetyl-CoA formation, and then we can even jump into the citric acid cycle because we have some of those amino acids that play a major role in our citric acid cycle, right? So there's a couple different amino acids that, um, that fall in as products, so it can just go directly from this to this. We can skip over the first parts and just jump right in mid-cycle, and then when we do, then the same cycle happens, you know, we're exhaling our carbon dioxide, we're producing a little bit of ATP here, but not nearly as much ATP as we produce down after the electron transport chain. So just kind of in summary then, because I know that this is kind of, it's a big process, it's easy to lose sight of all of the things. Then we start at the top with food, we're breaking into our biomolecules, right? There's lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, which we'll, again we'll get into in a separate video. We have metabolic processes that happen to break these down further into their component pieces, and through these processes, then we get the products that become reactants in our citric acid cycle. And kind of depending on how you're taught things, citric acid cycle sometimes comes first, and you kind of get these, these component pieces first, the fatty acid oxidation, glycolysis, and amino acid. Sometimes they start with the citric acid cycle and kind of back these things out. So citric acid cycle is at the heart of this, and then kind of dumping these reduced coenzymes, the NADH and the FADH2, into the electron transport chain, where those hydrogens that can then pop off along with the electrons, allowing for this production of ATP. Okay, so the name of the game is energy, and that energy comes from a number of different sources, and those sources all come from our food, and the breaking down of that food through these subsequent kind of chemical processes. So I hope that that is as clear as mud, at least it gives you a visual to kind of think about um, how the overall process works, how all of these things are interconnected with each other, and again I'll have some separate videos to talk about the component pieces. But if you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out, otherwise I'll talk to you again soon.